Are you curious about the history and stories of West Coast hip hop? Well, here it is. Los Angeles has a rich cultural and diverse history when it comes to art, dance, music, and especially hip hop. Often the stories by NWA and the rise of gangster rap dominate the conversation about West Coast rap and in the media. This group is a significant part of the history. However, for some reason, they're usually one of the only stories told over and over again. You rarely hear about the history or what was happening in the community before and after this time. From dance to music to fashion, Los Angeles has deep roots and a backstory of its own. Kids growing up in the early 1970s witnessed the development of hip hop on the West Coast. Style writer and graffiti legend Eric Create Walker was one of those kids. A native of South Central Los Angeles, Create found influences everywhere. From his cool and hip parents who parties of funk and soul groups cameo in the Ohio Players, to his uncle who replicated drawings from popular album covers and television shows at the time like Schoolhouse Rock or the Jackson 5 cartoon. For Create, inspiration was easy to find and was a large part of his environment. In his early drawings in elementary school, he would copy the lettering of the gang graffiti he saw on the walls of his Western and Slauson neighborhood in Los Angeles. As he soaked up the writing on the wall, literally, Hip hop as a music and art form made its way to the West Coast. Create jumped right in. He tested out all the hip hop elements, dance, graffiti, emceeing, and DJing. During those early years, the standards of hip hop were different. Participants were expected to do all the elements and be dope. This was the idea of a universal B-boy or B-girl. In his exploration of the hip hop elements, Create eventually found what would be his true calling, style writing, AKA graffiti art. Even though this ain't the right interpretation of it, <laughs> but I was told at that time you had to break, do graffiti, rap, DJ, and so forth. So I I was doing almost all of them, almost not all of them, but I was almost doing all of them. And so I remember breaking started slowly dying out. Cause we used to have school dances at school. And when this is junior high school, the KDAY used to come to our school and you could pay a quarter at lunchtime. And at lunchtime, you get inside the school dances in the girls' gym and they got the mix, mm-hmm. they got the mix masters in there scratching on the turntable. It's all dark wow. in the girls' gym. They got some colorful lights blinking around in the room. Mm-hmm. And we back there head spinning. We back there breaking. The people in there doing the freaking chilling. And it was cool. You know? And, uh, mm-hmm. I remember like them, them school dances, they start slowing down and breaking. You can't go in the, in the party dancing, breaking and stuff. Can't dance with the ladies like that. So the dances start phase out and other dances started to come in and really be more popular. Like the mm-hmm. Smurf, the Smurf, the Wop, the Freddy Cougar, all them silly dances, <laughs> you know, all them and, and, and the guests, all that stuff came out. And uh, th- those were the trendy dances. And uh, what ended up happening was once the breaking started fading out, I told my buddy, I remember, I said, hey, man, I said, if, if once breaking go away, man, what I'm going to do? <laughs> I said, man, I'm going to focus on graffiti, man, because I'm an artist and I'm going to focus on graffiti art. And that's what I did. I wasn't no MC, even though I could write rhymes, but I definitely could draw. So I said, I'm going to focus on graffiti art. And next thing you know, I start focusing on graffiti art like real heavy, after, especially after I saw this book called Subway Art. Subway Art, mm-hmm. we consider that to be the Bible of, uh, for us in LA and maybe around the world, we consider that to be the Bible of, of graffiti art because we could look at it and we was mimicking the characters, the letters, the color schemes, and that gave us a foundation and a blueprint to do our personal styles, but to put it in our own interpretation. 
Published in 1984, Subway Art, written by photojournalists Martha Cooper and Henry Chalfont, is one of the most influential books on the development of style writing and graffiti art. This book gives an overview of style writing in New York during the early years. Often using markers and whatever they can get their hands on, for pioneering style writers like Taki 183, it was all about getting fame. According to Subway Art, when writing about getting fame, a writer is judged by his mastery of painting and by the number of times he gets up. For young Black and Puerto Ricans, graffiti was a way to be recognized, seen, and heard. Early writers often bragged about when their tag names or pieces appeared on the news. This attempt to be heard was nothing new. For this generation, graffiti was one of their vehicles, especially in an environment of economic instability and lack of opportunities. Similar to the South Bronx, in the late 1960s, Los Angeles also experienced massive social economic changes in urban neighborhoods. Under President Ronald Reagan's administration, in predominantly Black and Latino communities, jobs dried up, art and other social service programs were cut, and resources were scarce. These conditions created a vacuum that soon will be filled with innovation and creativity in the form of street dance and hip hop. And, unfortunately, in many cases, the introduction of drug trafficking, which led to an increase in street gang violence on the streets of Los Angeles and throughout Los Angeles County. Encouraged by his parents, and especially his dad, Create was able to develop as a young artist. Surprisingly, he wanted to become a football player as a kid. Becoming an artist was only a backup plan he included in the third grade report. As he worked on his illustration and style writing, Walker still didn't have a name. According to Subway Art, the name is at the center of all graffiti art. The writer usually drops his given name and adopts a new one, a new identity. Along the way, he found mentors and Los Angeles style writers like Mad, Bizarre One, and Rich, who were his early influences. Create gives a lot of credit to and speaks highly of those he looked up to. It wouldn't be until middle school when Create would cross paths with the person who would give him his name.